Hello again, my friends, and you are my friends, and welcome to Talking Town. I'm, of course, the presenter, the host, the gov. Welcome back, one and all. I hope we are all good. A new signing, fourth one through the door. Tyrese John Jules has signed season long loan from Arsenal. We are here to, tonight to discuss that. Well, we weren't here tonight to discuss that. We were here to, to, tonight to discuss a couple of other things. But as always, we're talking town. We we did the reaction shows. I think sometimes our reaction shows are our best content. If you're new here, and we have got many new uh, viewers since Mark Ashton, the subscriber, uh, season ticket giveaway, then what we do is we discuss what's just happened and we throw it over to you at home uh, to either come on the show or get involved as many of you are currently doing through the use of the live chat. So what do we make of the signing? I, I was here on Monday discussing the, the, the last signing before the latest signing, which obviously was uh, Greg Lee. Uh, and that one felt very much like a, um, a mixed reaction, if you like. Yeah, but, but this one, just by dipping in very, very quickly social media, is it, is it, is it even more of a, of a transfer that um, is drawing mixed reviews? I don't know. I'm looking forward to hearing what people are going to say this evening. Before we get any further, a huge thank you to all of our Talking Town Fifth Stand Ultras, our monthly supporters, the guys and girls that make it worthwhile me sitting here this evening, not watching the Obi-Wan Kenobi season finale, or I probably should have started with seeing the wife there, actually, if she's going to watch this back. That's that's what I meant to say first, darling. Um, but no, honestly, a huge thank you to every single one of these people that support us. Be it one pound seventy five, four quid, five quid, ten quid, whatever it is. And if you want to do a do a good thing, if you, do, if you like what we do, if you want to follow their one wonderful, wonderful lead, then of course the links are in the description and in the live chat. And we still have one, Mister Anonymous or Mrs. Anonymous. So let me know if that is you. Right, let's get cracking with a couple of comments. Early doors. We've got e Rob Holmes. Evening all. I don't know. Wednesday are going for a sign, going for it, signing Volks and in talks with uh, Malik Wilkes and now Smith from Rotherham. I'd have fancied Smith from Rotherham, to be fair. Uh, Cruncher, anyone watching who hasn't subscribed, please do so. Absolutely. Whether you're watching this live or on catch up, uh, the, the race to 4,000 is, 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 is heating up. And obviously, once we hit 4,000, Crunch's wallet has to get prized open with the crowbar. A couple of season tickets for the community to win on a, on a, on a game by game basis. We're going to give a couple of, a couple of season tickets to uh, charity. All the all the information um, is on our channel. It's in the giveaway update um, video. Go and check it out. But the first thing you got to do is absolutely free. Doesn't cost you a thing. Doesn't cost you anything but one second of your time, and that is subscribe to the channel. A whopping forty percent of our viewers from last year. Which, when you think about our views as a whole, is just just under half a million. Forty percent weren't subscribed, which you know, there's lots of people still to hit that subscribe button. So get so get doing it, please do so. Uh, Mike D, one of our YouTube members, John Jules and Edwards, some pace on the flanks. Um, Crunch obviously was at Queen watching Queen and Adam Lambert. He says they were quality last night with a surname like that. I expected nothing less from. Adam. Right, go ahead and bring in our first contributor. I'm pretty sure he is up to date with all the latest happenings. It is, of course, the Milk Tray Man, Ben Adams. You know, you know when you're, like, you're going to go break up from a girlfriend, right? And with a thousand analogies, here he is, Ben Adams. I'm sure you're up to date with what's going on today, aren't you, really? Yeah, I, I, I literally uh, completely open. I had no idea we'd signed anyone until 25 minutes ago when I, I you text me. <laughs> I was literally come straight from work at home, shower, and get on this pod. Um, but yeah, like you, I've, I've dipped into who he is and what people are saying. And um, yeah, well, we'll talk about that. We certainly will. Uh, obviously, tomorrow we are live at 9 a.m. for our uh, League One Ipswich Town season fixtures reaction show. Mm. Not the more catchy name than that. We'll obviously look at a couple of fixtures tonight. Um, do you fancy Doncaster at home, any chance, Ben? Um, I have, I, oh God, I, I don't know who we fancy at home. Who knows anymore? I don't even know what team is going to be out there. Um, I've, I've got two teams I would like to. Apart from that, I literally have no idea about any other League One club apart from what happens at Town. Okay. 
The people in the chat are asking for a car analogy from you for, for the signing of Tyrese John George. So what we'll do is, before we bring Mike in, okay. I just want to run through... Well, first of all, I reached out to a Wednesday fan and I got told, well, he played for us for about seven minutes, mate. So I can't really tell you anything <laughs> because it's, it's seven minutes. Fair play. I then tried to reach out to a Blackpool fan and, yeah, you guessed it, couldn't find one. Um, so... I, no, that's that's a bit naughty of me. I could find one. I just didn't get a reply. <laughs> but I so I'm just gonna go with the facts and the figures from Sofa Score. Tyrese John Jules last year in the championship, eight start, zero goals, uh, 0.5 key passes, okay. uh, two big chances missed. Um, I, I, I couldn't see any assists on there either. But the year before in League One, now bear in mind, my friends at home and of course yourself there, Ben. We are we are a League One side. Uh, 13 starts with five goals and three assists. So that's the that's the stats. That's the facts and the figures from from Sofa Score. Car analogy, asked Mike D. What, what, what are you saying, early doors? Um, I'm I'm going to need to think about it really. Um, maybe something like a DeLorean. Where it probably looks quite good, but the um the figures don't lie. It's a shit car. I I don't know. I don't know yet. Um, <laughs> it doesn't. I, 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 is he a striker that's going to get you out of League One? Doesn't sound like it. I see a lot of people saying good signing. Okay, based on what? Um, I, th I think Piggott last season, the season before last, scored more goals than this guy ever. So people want him gone. People wanted Norwood, so it was his natural time to go. He's scored more goals than this guy um, with injuries. And um, people were not too upset that Bong left, and he scored 12 more goals than, no, seven more goals than he's ever scored ever. So doesn't sound great it's another free signing i thought we had money that's four more players so we're going for another bomb squad edition without getting rid of anyone i'm not sure a lot of okay. players on the free bit worried about the trajectory not gonna lie okay lots of players on the free bit worried i'll write that down I'll come back to that i will unpack that mm. with you as we go through this evening uh, adam had a dream last night with the fixtures our first game was derby away uh, mike d don't think he'll be a played as a striker uh, james this one is a slightly odd one for me uh, mm. links coming my friends do not worry um the link is coming stephen but then murphy was shit but then Murphy was shit, Stephen, for about three seasons, and then suddenly yeah, wasn't. we had to sign. We had to sign him three times for him to be good. So yeah. um, we we, yeah. we do you want to do three more years of League One before this guy suddenly bags in twenty five goals? Not for me. Now, uh, see, uh, <clears throat> with, with, with a signing like this, before I bring in Mike, because I know Mike mm -hmm. has been already on the social media getting the uh, the strings, at, well, getting the old fishing line out and hooking some some proper whoppers, but. You can't really be right or wrong in this situation because if you're like, if, if, if you, what's the word? If you're negative towards a signing, people will say you're not giving him a chance. If he then turns out to be dross, people will say you're just looking for a chance to be right. If you get behind him and he's crap, people will then come back to you in six months' time and say, You told me he was good. So you. I do feel for a bit of like yeah, we, we, we can, yeah, we can only we can only determine it from where we stand right now. And, and don't get me wrong, if he suddenly comes in and for the first time in his professional career bangs in twenty goals, fair enough. What a great signing! But um, the wow. the opinion is only be made as we stand. And the only thing I need I need to know is we have to get out of this league this year. And and so far, it's this guy who scored a few goals and Caden Jackson. Jesus Christ, are these are these the players that are gonna um, you know do us uh, someone like um, you know who got promoted last year? You know he had he had six players scoring fifteen mm. goals each. Yeah. Um, I don't see a player in our squad who can score more than fifteen, apart from maybe you know although Chapman if he's played right position. Yeah, the Dapo or, probably or could. The Dapo probably yeah. could. Um, I get you. I get you. Maybe. Kelly says, uh, fuck's sake, lads, have some faith. Club done their research and he fits the profile. He <clears> isn't <throat> going to be a starter, but back up an impact sub and not wrong with freebies. Remember Wes Burns, he was a freebie. Uh, Lewis suggests, Sonny suggests to me that Piggott is off, but still believe we have a main striker to come in. Another athletic player. Certainly fits the, the, the player profile that the club have been mm. speaking about. Right. We've, we've, we've held off. held him off long enough. Link incoming. Let's get He'll it. have you on strings. The Fisherman. Mike Brown. I've already said, and I've said on Twitter and whatever. You've certainly been on Twitter or whatever this evening, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Brown. Right, I'm putting the link in now. What do you make of the free transfer signing tonight, Mr. Fisherman? Talk about it tonight. It's this, this 
agenda at the moment, assign freebies. It's like, hang on a minute. Didn't Marcus Evans sell our club? Um, look, if they work out, that's great. You know, it's one of those, isn't it? If, it, if they work out, then, you know, we're all, it's a win-win. <laughs> But, you know, our freebies, our record on freebies, haven't exactly been great. And this this new guy tonight, strange one, does it fit McKenna's profile or type of player that he wants? <sighs> yeah, um, I guess he does. I mean, Jack, the only thing I would say, Jackson's not scored more goals than he has. And I want Jackson gone. You know, so Kind of the same. You yeah. know, that, and that's where I am with this signing. Look, I'm, I'm not going to... I mean, for Ladapo was a great signing. I ain't going to lie. I thought, yeah, that was a good freebie. A um, bit shocked that we got him, actually, to be honest. Uh, Ball, I was kind of left wondering, well, is he, you know, he going to play like – where's he going to play? Is he going to play behind Morsey? Is he going to play level with Morsey? Or is he going to allow – is this going to allow Morsey to go further forward? Or is Morsey off, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Um, and in my head is surely they're going to play as a two-number – to, to holding, surely, you know, if, you know, because, and that says to me, then we're going to struggle to go get forward unless, uh, you know, unless we find that playmaker in that hole in front of them too, you know, and, and that's the biggest problem with all these signings. We've got all these players that possibly and could be and maybe score goals, but where's the service coming from? Because there, okay. is, there ain't great, there hasn't been no great service, has there? You know, people are all about Selena and coming and, and staying at the club. But, you know, what we need is a player. Like I, we've, we've said it before, and I know there's, like, links to championship clubs for him, Scott Twine. But we need a Scott Twine-esque type of player, players, plural, to come in and, and create some creativity because what we don't have is creativity. Um, and, you know... It just worries me with all these freebies. That come is it, well, in. It, it's quick to put. I've got to be. I've got to be obviously wary and point out that it's not a free transfer. It's it's a season long loan. You know, he's here only here for the season initially. It's not a free. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding of it. Certainly, listening to the first thirty seconds of the of the, the club press that he did. Yeah, yeah. But even on that basis of a loan, Mike, I'm going to give you four players here that we spent money on: Tamas Priskin, Lee Martin. Grant Ledbetter, David Norris. Like, just because you've signed a player with a fee attached does not mean he is going to rock up and set the world alight. Free transfers, if I'm right in remembering, I literally just scribbled these down as you were talking. Christoph Berra, David McGoldrick, Ivan Campo, Jordan Spence. I ran out of I ran out of players as I got through the freebies. Granted, but I'm not sure I subscribe to this, Ben. Where it, it's a free, it's a, it's a problem. Like it's the ability, and the League One stats were much better than the Championship stats, and we're a League One side. I, I, yeah, I, th I think maybe there's an acceptance there of kind of where we are. So maybe I'm kind of overestimating our pooing power, our buying power, uh, and there's probably the fact that I've, I don't know, it's it's, pr it's probably my own, you know, my own frustration. I just want to see those big players come in. I'm just I'm just a fan who wants us to do well. I know, I've seen 20 years of freebies and worked out and I just don't want this to be 21. So it's because I just want to get those brilliant signings and that, you know, the, the good fees for proven players. That's what I want to see. So I do own my own kind of, I'm getting um, not very patient. I think it's probably the way. And I really hope that this boy works out, but we can only kind of cast our um, aspersions of what we think they might be like and where they come from. And the manager does the same thing. Um, you know, you, you kind of see where a player has come from. So obviously McKenna sees something in this new guy, but no other team or no other manager or no other, you couldn't even find a supporter to say anything about him. He obviously sees something that the whole of the rest of the world doesn't. And I suppose I do trust McKenna. So maybe I have to trust his process rather than the player, perhaps. Uh, do you know what? I McKenna's still got to earn my trust. And I'm just being yeah. totally honest in how I feel about it. I like him as a manager. Um, I'm happy that he's our manager. Uh, you know, I'm not going to be 10 games in calling for his head because obviously, you know, it is what it is. And, we, you know, he's got this season regardless of what we feel. Come Christmas, if we're not anywhere near the top six, then, yeah, I think most of us will be calling for his head because at the end of the day is, you know, you've got, you're building a squad. We have a foundation, which is what we don't have, didn't have last season. We've got a defensive foundation that, and, you know, one or two midfielders, et cetera, 
of, of a foundation that this house is being built on. So that's the difference between where we are from last season to the start of this season. Do I think we'll have a better start? Yeah, I do, actually. I think we will have a better start. Mm, It'll possibly be worse than what it was under Cook. Mm. Um, I just feel that I, I just want to. I hope that McKenna's learned from some of the mistakes he made last season with, with regarding to, uh, games from, you know, like you said, with Paul Cook, it was plan A with, and then plan B with the same players. And, and you know, and plan A with the same players. And, and there was a couple of games where McKenna was very much like that. Okay, plan A's not working. Okay, we'll change the players, but keep the plan A. You know, sometimes, like I said, League One's not like that. League One is a, is a ruthless league and there's teams playing all different types of style of football. Different styles of uh, of play. Some are some are some are you know some can can contain the ball, control the ball, move the ball around. Others play long ball, play into the channels. You know, and and we've got to we've got to be able to adapt. And that's the thing with McKenna. I think he's got to adapt in this league so that we can. You know, I, I have a lot. I, I do have a lot of faith that we can do well. I just think that right now. You know, it's a lonely, it was a strange one. I didn't see, I don't, under, to me, I didn't understand the need to bring a player like that in, to be honest. But, mm. you know, McKenna's brought him in. Um, we'll see how he goes. And I do think, um, you know, that we've got to get a quality, a quality midfielder, you know, a forward mm. quality midfielder to create and help and, and just some, score some goals. Because we can't keep relying on the front, Lot because that ain't happening. It hasn't been happening for a while. I think um, I, there's a really good comment in there, Jason Fisk. Um, plus, we all <clears throat> where is it? Um, some about the five. Subs. Plus, we all have. What's mean? We have five. Subs. Yeah, I, I actually think that's a very good point because if we're gonna, if we're at the point in the game, sixty minutes where we need to change, maybe a front three. Who knows? Depending on what we're chasing, then it would kind of make sense that we need kind of you know one more striker than we usually buy. That's actually a really fair point. So maybe this young guy's come in to be. Maybe he's an impact sub. Maybe he's there for pace. Maybe he's a good link-up player rather than a goal scorer. So that's that's a really good point, actually. That certainly is one of the things I've I've been heavily critical of the football club. It feels like forever has been the lack of pace within the ranks, and this certainly does yeah. add another pacey player to already a number of growing players that have that that pace in abundance. Whether you like Caden Jackson or not, he does have that short, sharp burst of pace, which can. <clears throat> Uh, you know, upset defenders, particularly late on in, on in games. Now, but this is obviously talking town, the fan platform. We give the, the power to you to have your say. You've heard from Ben, you've heard from Mike, whether you agree or whether you disagree. And that's probably more important if you disagree, because we want to have that balance of opinions, those, yeah, those counteractions. Uh, please do hit the link now in the chat and get involved. I've got the cruncher coming in. I don't know what side of the fence he's going to sit on. He's got his name down as all about profiles. And then we've got Louis Fenton joining the chat, but we want to hear as many voices as we can this season. Before I bring them in, a few more comments. Mike D, we have a philosophy for the first time in years. Manager knows what he wants and knows them all from his coaching career. Give them a chance. Stephen Parry, there is, a, there is very few sales in League One or the Championship at the moment. They are, they are not easy to do. Clubs might need a player in first or clubs might want to look at them in pre-season. Uh, Lewis, signings have been smart business. If this were August 31st, I'd be disappointed. But we have five weeks until season starts. Another striker, number 10, a left winger, and we are good to go. And then Craig yeah, asked the question, are we going to blow the budget? Or, in his words, spend the budget on one or two quality players, a 10 and a goal scorer? Question mark. Cruncher! Mike Brown, don't roll your eyes at me. I see you rolling your eyes. How are we well, doing, chaps? How, How are we well, doing? Very well. How are you? What do you make of the signing? Well, I'm a lot more happy than these two miserable bastards. I'll tell you that for a fact. <laughs> I'm not miserable. I've just seen it all before. Yeah, he's really well. Is Marcus Evans still own our club? Or what I get, though, what, what I get, what I get, crunch, particularly from both of these fellas, is this overriding desire and, uh, and desperation for every player to be a, a baseball home run because we're desperate to get out of this level. So when you sign a player, you come in from work as Ben has done this evening, and you say, "Well, we sign a player." You look at the, the stat sheet. He's desperate. I'm desperate. You're desperate. Mike's desperate for that player to literally tick every single box and go right promotion. Get it booked. Isn't going to happen. Doesn't always shake out like that. Wes Burns, for example, was somebody who I, I think even last year, Napa said, would get you a couple of goals. Well, he did more than that. Did very well. But not every yeah. player is a Wes Burns crunch. As we had a conversation Monday about Greg Lee. 
So how are you seeing it with your football knowledge of somebody who sees a lot of football? See, see, I did say, I think on uh, a few Sundays ago, Martin, that Kieran McKenna and Martin Pert will know all about these academies. You know, he was at Spurs. He was at Forest. He was. He knows all about these young players. He knows about their profile, what they can bring to the team. You look at his stats. I, I agree with Mike and I agree with Ben. They're not jumping out the box. But what we do have to realise is we are a League One club. I was talking to Rob Chandler tonight, Matt Martin. You know, the guy who used to do the tannoy. And I said, that's what a lot of our fans, we need to grasp that we're still a League One club. We're not going to be signing Lionel Messi. You know, you look at you look at yesterday, Mike, Corley Woodrow, linked to town. But he goes to Luton. And I know that breaks Martin's heart because Luton, you go there. It's an absolute fucking shithole, their ground. But <laughs> it shows... <laughs> where they are in the football pyramid and where we are. You know, we want to get there. And this is why we, some of these players, Mike, we can't get them at the minute. We want them, but Luton have had a good season. You know, Nathan Jones done a really good job there. So we're not capable of getting players like that. And I understand, look, I'm, I'm quite interested. Martin's not great at pronouncing names, Ben. So he struggles with Andre Dezel. What's this guy's <laughs> name? Tyrese John Jules. There you go. First time. But look, TJ. I think I spoke to Jake from the... Um, you should you should have got on to me. Jake from the Stacey West podcast. You'd have had him on tonight from Lincoln. Who? The what podcast? Stacey, oh, Lincoln. Stacey oh, West. So he I played I there. Don't, I don't deal with small shrimp crunch. We do, we, we do a big cod here, son. <laughs> there you go. But <laughs> he, was, he was at Lincoln. He played with Tyler Walker. He said sometimes, Mike, he did go missing in games. But that was three years ago. He's three years on now. He's 21. Look. Well, fuck me. Jesus Christ. Three years ago, I had... No, I was still a sexy, sex, sexy, sexy sex god. No, no, I was no, going no. with that. No, I was going I'm with sh- that. But <laughs> let's, let's, let's see what he can do. I'm, I'm, look, I did say to Mark Ashton, I wanted all our players in early. And we've got four in already, Martin. You know, And, I, and I'm really happy where we're sitting as a squad at, at the moment. Where's the creativity coming from? Mike, we are on the 22nd of June. We don't no, start I'm just, until I'm, 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 I'm just saying, we've signed four players, great and all that, but where's creativity coming from? I'm asking the question. I'm just. I'm sure know. I'm sure that by the time we kick off, like I say, in five weeks' time, we'll have that number 10. We'll have that. I think we'll still sign another striker, Martin, for money. I still, yeah, I think so Joe right. Piggott, Piggott will probably go out the door. I agree with, um, it was Carl Brooks on social media when he said about, um, Three years ago, Mike had hair. He didn't. <laughs> he didn't have hair three years I ago. No job. Hair. I have a full head of hair. Just choose to shave it short. But I agree. It was Carl Brooks who said on social media, Ben, about the five subs. And I think this yeah. is where this season, hopefully, it should benefit town. I I agree with that, actually. I agree. And that's, I think it would benefit McKenna, who's, I think, are, are quite good at in-game tactical changes. Now you just said that you've added another two strings to a bow that I think he's particularly strong with. So if you're going to make well-timed changes with good players, I, th- I think the five subs will really suit our manager, which I think will be a real plus point this season. I agree with that. And I, I, I'm not sure there'll be a starter, Martin, to this guy to, to start with. But let's judge him before. Let's judge him before. A lot of the fans on social media, Mike, have judged him already tonight. He's shit. We've looked at his no, goal record. He's no that. good. No, but not you. Not you. I'm saying a lot of fans, and this, yeah. this, this seems to happen with town mm. fans a lot. We sign a player, it's like a free transfer. Oh, Jesus! Why haven't we spent two million feel on a, a little player? Bit underwhelmed. That's all I'm saying. I just feel a little bit underwhelmed at the moment. We've got okay, great. We've got four signings in, and and look, for me, the the best signing so far is Ladapo. Um, hang on, hang on. What did you call him? What did you call him the other day when you sent me a voice oh, message? Lombardo. No, yeah. You called him Lombardo, <laughs> Ben. <laughs> Lombardo. Yeah, right, right. Lombardo. Yeah, I think that's a really good, good quality <laughs> signing. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit on the fence with Ball. I'm, 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 um, Lee, He's a good player. Ball's Daniel a good player. And, Ball's and a good... A bit offend... Sorry? Ball's a good player. He will be a good player for town. He'll sit in front of that back four and he'll do that. Yeah, but then, that then you ask Morsey to get forward and score these 10, 10 goals from the midfield. That ain't never happened in a million years. It's never he's never been his position for a lot in, in his whole career. So why would you start asking him to do that now? Can, I ask, a Can I ask a question? Right, I'm just looking at the squad options on paper. You got Wes Burns to just start in right wing back, right, mm-hmm. right wing back. Right. Purposes. Mm-hmm. You haven't got a starting left wing back, but you now have got some quality potentially, but certainly pacey depth options in, in Tyrese John Jules and Carl Edwards, two players that can come in at either flank, 
bit of pace. Game changes late on. You're not going to perhaps miss Burns if he has to have a, a game off every so often through to a knock. He does get kicked at this level, um, potentially in terms of you know the pace. Because last year you might West miss Burns, him for the World Cup, Martin. You might miss Wes Burns for six yeah. weeks. Because Wes Burns was our pace last year. Once he left the field, yeah, we, but we, we, remember, like we, remember if it weren't for yeah, but you were to give him Wes Burns some praise. But him and Danassian worked well as a partnership, and it was down True. to Danassian and their partnership. The reason why Burns was allowed to get forward and do as much damage as he did. What happens if we get? What happens if Danassian gets injured, or you know, and he's out? Ah, oh, come on, Mike. You can re- you can replace the centre half. Come on. Yeah, no, oh, right, okay, okay, yeah, okay. So without 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 Danassian, then um, Burns would have scored all them goals, would he? I, said, oh, I, I knew, I knew when I said hey, no, he'll have you on strings. That was he's easy to get fired up, isn't he? He's but, easy to just. It's so was, easy, might be you. Where I was going with it was you keep saying about number ten. I actually think we don't need a new number ten. You've got you got Chapman. I agree. There, I agree with got, this. And you've got Sonny Aluko. Now you've given Aluko yeah. a deal. I ain't paying people to play two games in the next twelve months <clears> and then be released. Connor Chaplin is easily my best number 10 last year and this year. And what Could I would have... say... Go on. Chuck go on. Cameron Humphreys mine into the mix. Possibly. Mm-hmm. Let's let's put that money you'd spend on a left wing, a left winger and a number 10 into one quality left winger. Really get the guy you want instead of trying to spread yourself across two positions. But after that, Ben, there's a saying in NFL, teams that win in, in, uh, in June don't win in January. Last year, we had a summer that people were salivating over. Selena signing, Morsi <clears throat> signing, 100 points, 100 goals. We won last summer, finished 11th. So well, I was questioning, I was questioning, I was questioning Cook and some of the signings before before Morsi came in. No chance you saw Burst and Selena rock up to Portman Road, have a hug with Cook and Ashton and thought, yeah, 11th place, lads. No, but I, I, you look back on the show, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm straight talker, straight. I don't, I don't bullshit. If I've got something to say, I say. If I'm right, I'm right. I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And that's the bottom line. But I wasn't, I wasn't happy with Cook at the start. Of the, you know, I, I, well before, you know, before. I, 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 I agree with that. I, I agree with that. I agree with you, Mike. I, I think you and I were one of the first ones to break yeah. banks on Cook. I think we got absolutely slaughtered by it, if I remember. Absolutely, and we're all in fans apologising now a, for. for I, don't, giving I, don't mean, I don't mean an apology. Like apologising, oh my opinion. lord! Really? I, I, no, if you're going to give someone shit for having, having an opinion and uh, uh, and then being right on that opinion, anyway, Mike, I've got something. To... Yes, darling. So, Ty- Tyrese John Jules <laughs> has he got a better goal record than Marlon Harewood? That's for town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know that name. I just can't. <laughs> just not it, mate. No, oh, no, never heard of him. Mate. Never heard oh, of him. Yeah. He played for West Ham, I think, didn't he? Did well there. And then Knox Forest, he did well there as well. Oh, did we? Did we sign him? No, I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, oh, love as, you, I, as love I was going to say, perhaps a few under the radar signings, a, a quieter, more prudish summer. Uh, isn't necessarily a bad thing, Rich. You know. Oh yeah, it's... totally, totally. Uh, look, we got to trust. We got to trust Kieran on this. We got to trust the process. Let's say we got to trust the that's, that's what it comes down to. The players we don't really know too much about. Um, but fundamentally, I think whatever my personal reservations are, only through the desperation to you know get their marquee signing, I do trust our coach, and I think his biggest strength is his coaching. But, of all, of all of the, the fucking Martin Scorsese, Ridley Scott inspired kit reveal that we had this week. Here we go. Um, one thing I actually did like that the um, <clears throat> what, what is the behind the scenes thing of a kit reveal? Here's the behind the scenes. Here you go, lads. Here's the new shirt. Stand over there. We're going to take a picture. Over. It's not a DVD, <laughs> Blu ray, Blu ray fucking um, extra. Anyway, I'm getting off point. What I'm saying is one video I really did like was the training session. Uh, and I was kind of very carefully watching Kira McKenna. I really like the, the, the drills, the communication, the talking. And I love the camaraderie between the players. I think that was, you know, especially Edwards. That guy never stopped smiling for someone who's had a really... So, I totally agree experience. with you, Ben. That's I was brilliant. speaking to Colin. I was speaking to Colin today about Kyle Edwards. And if there's ever a player at town oh, who, I I want to, who I want to succeed is him. He's oh, so he's, infectious. He's lovely, isn't he? He's lovely. Yeah. I agree. I want him to... He, when you think when he came, we thought, holy fucking shit. Are we, are we just... Did every other team just miss this guy, not see him coming? And then he slowed down a bit and got injured. If he's under a really good coach now, if that boy stays fit and is coached well, particularly with our saying in ball, 
he could be the, the signing of the season because I think that guy's got the potential to blow this league apart more than anyone else I think we probably have apart from probably Burns. That That's the one I think we're going to be talking about for a whole year. If he stays he's fit also, and he's coached, oh, brilliant. Who's going to be our set-piece set specialist then? Haven't bought him yet. Yeah, so okay, so we, we haven't got one, we haven't got no one that can take a decent well, yeah. no, we, we haven't, haven't got no yet. one that can take a decent corner because we had that last year. Lee Evans. Unless 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 these new boys that are come in can take a decent corner. Right. Um, you know, we struggled we struggled with crosses from the right and from the left. So again, that's another, mm -hmm. you know. So that 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 seven or eight players I said we need to bring in, and everybody said, No, 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 we only need three or four, we're only three away, aren't we? Mike, we finished eleventh. You, you'd be easy to say, and we finished eleventh. We were shit of everything last year. Corners, free kicks, know, stopping crosses, but, yeah, but making saying, crosses. What I'm saying is, is that, <laughs> do you know what I mean? There was nothing we, we know, did well last year. Guys, and I said we need seven, between seven and eight to get us to get us to get us, you know, a better squad than we had last year. And we're only three away from having that. So you know, yet again, I'm right. <laughs> he's, he's on one. He's on one. He's on one. Uh, Rich, before I let you go and bring in Louis for his say out on the signing. Uh, first of all, the season ticket giveaway. <laughs> tell the people at home what they can win, how they can win it, how to get involved. Uh, well, hopefully um, you are subscribed if you're watching. If you're not, why not? Uh, if we get four thousand by the big kickoff, July the thirtieth, we'll know where we're going tomorrow morning, nine a.m. <clears throat> if you're not watching us, why not? Because we're live. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna buy an adult and a junior season ticket if we hit four thousand. Uh, Lewis is gonna give a shirt away. We've got another shirt from Joe Jones. Lewis is gonna give another shirt away if Matt Penny's still here, Mike, by uh, the end of the transfer window. And Sam Morsey and there's another couple of guys are gonna buy season tickets and they're gonna go to charity. So if you're not subscribed, please do so. It's very important to um even if look even if you don't watch Talking Town or you don't like us. You're going to help fellow town fans to get to some games at Portman Road, hopefully yeah, next season, and hopefully see a uh, promotion-winning team, and hopefully make Mike Brown smile and happy. Did you mention? I'm Charlie? always happy. What are you all about? Hey, they call me Mister Happy. You can just smile there, or have you got wind? He's, he's got. He's got <laughs> Did you mention Charlie? Always, well? always happy. Can you tell? <laughs> I didn't hear it, but we are currently 323 away from four. 4, See, we're getting we there. Yeah. We're getting we there. Oh, it's easily achievable. Now, hopefully, we had to announce which charity. So tonight, um, so how many of you got watching live now, Martin? 260. So if everybody tonight who's watching live now gets one new subscriber, one new okay. subscriber, that's all, look, all we ask for. One, your mum, your dad, the cat, the dog, the bin man, anybody. Make make another YouTube account. Just yeah. just make some make some bloody false accounts. What have you got to do to get the subscribers up? Come on. And and because of the way you've said that, I've now got me, me mum and me dad and me gram. We're off to Waterloo, my age. Cheers for that, Rich. Yeah, no, again, we're off to Waterloo. Oh, fuck it, Vindaloo. Kick it. Crunch. See you tomorrow. 9am tomorrow. See you there. 9am. See you, see you, see you tomorrow. Yeah, Louis. Yeah. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Come on, I'm good. Where's, yeah. the blue, where's the blue wall gone, Louis? Oh, it's there. My room's, my room's been rearranged, so yeah. Okay, fair play. I was going to say. I'm just so on a high because the basketball team has won the NBA, so yeah. Congratulations. Con yeah, congratulations. Was... So, but has your football team won the day by signing Tyrese uh, John Jules? I don't know, you know. I, I just don't know at the moment with these signings. I'm, I was happy. I don't, I really just don't know because I don't know enough about all these players apart from. I, I think I agree with you, Mike, about Ladapo being the best the best signing out of all of them. The other three I don't really know a lot about, so but it's like okay. I just don't see why some people are getting a bit annoyed about the freebies and the loanies, but it's like it's happened in the past where we've brought in freebies and they've worked. <clears throat> or like um who was it? I, I guess you could say Norwood because he was on a free and he kind of worked, I guess, in a way. So it's like they do work at times, but yeah, of course, I uh, understand where they're coming from at times because they don't work. I, I just get, I just look. I, I totally agree what you just said. Look, you know, look. We, the problem is, is that the last God knows how many years we've, we've, you know, the reason why we're in League One is because of some shocking decisions and shocking players that we brought in on free and loans and and stuff like that. You know, 
one or two lone players can make a difference to a to a squad. Um, but bringing in like we've had in the past seven, eight, nine, ten, I think I think the record was under McCarthy. I think we brought in fifteen in one season. You know that you know they're not our players. They're going to play 90, 95% of their potential unless it's in their interest. What we do, what we have, and what we do have now, I guess, is we have a squad of players that are ours, you know, and maybe, maybe that will help us better than than our past. Just, I don't like too many. Uh, look, we've got money, um, and we do need that quality player to. We don't have a set piece specialist. We need one desperately. And I know, you know, I say Scott Scott Twine. Don't look like we're going to get him. I think he's going to hold somewhere like that. So, yeah, I don't think. I think that ship has sailed. Mm. Yeah, that ship never never left the port. Yeah, <laughs> I think, think you're right. <laughs> that was never going to happen. Although, you know, who knows with football? Do you, do you think, Louis, uh, a shape change maybe on the horizon for town? Do you think we, uh-huh. you know, last year we were three five two? Do you think with the signings we've seen come in, we might see a, a, see a change of shape? Yeah, I think he's going to play. I think he'll play top top next year, and he'll have one ten sitting in behind. Because that's what I know. I know some people are split with him, but I think that's where Selena would actually work if we do sign him. I think if he's if it's just him as a number ten in behind, um, maybe Ladapo and the new guy John Jules, or maybe Ladapo and Jackson. I think it would really work because mm. Selena. We all know what Selena's capable of. He's a really creative player, and he's can, mm-hmm. and he can be a real impact player. And you've got you've got two strikers who. Have a lot of pace and and they can finish as well. We've seen that. I think Ladapo Ladapo can finish, and Jackson Jackson can finish as well under McKenna. So I think Selena on his own. I think with two strikers in front of him, I think that would work. Uh, you mentioned Selena there, or, or or I heard Selena there from Louis Ben. Do you think Selena? Do you think that's that 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 ship has sailed? Do you think that's a no go? Do you think that's still? Um, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. I hope it's a ship has sailed. Yeah. You wouldn't want him back. No. No, it's a no for me as well. Too inconsistent you know. for me. Bring it, bring it. When he when he's good, he's ten out of ten. The other yeah. seven games out of ten, he plays. Um, I, I, I've, I've kind of always said uh, he's a great player and a lovely guy. Um, give me a player that you know is a consistent seven out of ten, than a very inconsistent nine or ten out of ten. It's just my preference. You know, I'm not undervaluing the guy, but I, I like solid and dependable and, and regular standard rather than world beater. Anonymous, well beater, anonymous. So that that's a personal preference. All right, Mick McCarthy, I, I, okay. I, calm yourself down. I, I wanted look. I was on the fence with Selena until his petulance, where he should have been sent off. That game where he should have been sent off. He should, where he pushed that player and proper pushed him. And I, you know, that, that's when I lost Selena. When when Selena for me was like, no, we don't need someone like him. We don't mind having passion. We don't mind having, you know, but like Ben said, you you know, you can have a world beat in one game and then the next four games it goes missing and you think, okay, so it's we, like we're watching 10 players on the pitch. You yeah. know, we've got to have a consistent, the reason why Wigan are up, the reason why Rotherham are up is because they've got a consistent, they've got consistent players and consistent, and all players are playing a, above, a seven and above. You know, not world beaters. Yeah, they're not world beaters. Teams. They're just very good. And they're, they're, mm-hmm. those teams you just mentioned, none of those players are smashed up every week. They're just no. good regularly, and that's enough to get out of League One. Championship, championship. You need a Selena doing that every single week. Different league, but for us, seven out of ten all the time. That's yeah. The what, I would, what, what, what I would say, coming back of what we both just said there, in regards to the freeze, I, I could disagree with you more, Mike, in regards to the the, the valuation of a player, whether, whether they were a free transfer or, or a transfer fee that's been paid. I, I don't see the correlation between good player, bad player, particularly in modern day football. And, um, I couldn't disagree with you more. It's kind of covered the comments of that of that effect. Martin Flory, uh, one of our YouTube members, Fisherman, we are under a new era and a really good coach. We need to get the negative side. I would agree with that as well with Martin. I would go along and say, you know what? The Evans era has long gone. This is a new era. New people, proper mm-hmm. football men in charge. Um, again, the freeness of it, as Max says here, I if Sid or Twine came in for a free, would we whinge? So if Scott Twine was a, was currently a free transfer because he, his contract had, had wound down at MK, he, they couldn't afford him. You, you, you're going to be complaining. It's again, you, the player is is the most important, not the size or lack of fee. Surely. Well, look at the players we signed last year. 
Wes Burns, our best player, was a free. Yeah. Yeah. Fraser signed, weren't played in his natural position. Didn't never got the best out of him. Ended up going to Christmas. Complete, completely mind blown by that one. That was Cook's fault, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, probably was. Yeah, yeah, of course it was. You know. The chat would like you to blow kisses. Bloody crunch. Oh, hang on then. No. There you go. <laughs> just, a shout, uh, Louis, just, shout, just a shout out the fan base. Uh, <laughs> Louis, before I let you go, where would you go next if you were Mark Ashton? Um, probably another number 10, I'd say. When times another sign, another number 10. Yeah. And, and finally, free, lack of, thereof, fee. Where are you on this on this debate? Because you, you said you you weren't quite sure uh, about it earlier. But what, what what's your actual opinion there, Louis? Do you care if a player comes in on a free or a fee, or is it irrelevant to yourself? Irrelevant, just as long as it's just all depends on who he is and what he's capable of, what he can do in a town show, really. So yeah, good man, good man. Mike the Fishman would say, would say Paul Pogba, no good. Louis, we appreciate it, we love you. Yeah. Look after yourself. Okay, um, what is a free transfer, Mike? I'd have Paul Pogba tomorrow. Not for, not I'd drive him here. I'd drive no, him. Leave one. one. No, Mike, no, 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 no. Mike, 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 don't embarrass well, yourself. Overrated don't embarrass yourself. He could do it for France, but he can't do it for clubs. Yeah, whatever. Oh, fuck. And in that case, I'd get everyone around the ground to change their name to the, the French equivalent and start speaking in French if it got Paul Pogba at League One. Play. Like, come on, Mike. <laughs> I think he'd I, I think he'd do more damage and hunt good to be honest if we signed a player like him. He's too much about himself, too much about his ego. And that's why, you know, that's why Ferguson got rid of him and, and others played just other people decided to bring him back to United. You're not alone. So, I mean Owen's not, not not agreeing with it. Uh we've got Rakeem Harper who needs exactly <laughs> Mike. Yeah, yeah. Uh, two types of free, ones who nobody wants and those who run their contracts down. Absolutely. Well, that's that, that's that, that's true. He wasn't even free, was he? No, he wasn't. I said it, and I, I was like, I say, yeah, we paid. Roll with it. Undisclosed fee, wasn't it? Yeah. I was hoping nobody would just like come back on it. I was just, I thought. Yeah, I was going to say, I was checking that. It's undisclosed fee, thought to be around three hundred thousand. Got the same yeah. fact check as the government. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, naughty, naughty <laughs> gov. Um, Josh would rather get players on a free. Uh, and they fail to spend money, and it fails that the process take its course. He also says, Mike, you've lost it, but then that would suggest you found it to lose it, which Josh, we all know is not the case. He's been, giving me, he's been giving me shit on Twitter, right? Right. With respects to you, Josh, you, uh, you know, I met you and love you and all that, but look, you know, we had all these freebies and stuff under, under Marcus Evans, you know, we're not under Marcus Evans, as I, I got reminded tonight. And I've reminded people before, we're not under Marcus Evans. If we've got money and there's a player that we want, whether it's a championship or League One, and we've got the money to buy him, then bloody use the money to buy him. You know, let's bring in that player that can, that can, that midfielder that can score 10 goals. Other than obviously, I know we've got Burns, but, you know, but in all fairness, we do need that central midfielder to chip in with the goals. Yeah. We've got our defensives who, who, you know, how many exactly. goals did we score from corners last year? Well, we've got to get a corner over... over, over Absolutely. Over the... This is my point. We, we, you know, we brought in four. Can any of them take a corner? Can any of them take a free kick? What was the final Not stat? Really was it 132 it? corners and one goal, I think it was? I think it was higher than that. Oh, no, yeah, it, it might have been. It was, I thought it was in the 300s. Either yeah, way, it was diabolically right. bad. Uh, you know, Crunch will know, because Crunch got, knows uh, everything. And players like that are very rare to get on a free. Look, if we get we get Scott, I know look, Scott Twine. I think everybody, look, you know, that's yeah, why champions get clubs on him. Mike, but we do need a player of his esk or his elk, yeah. so that we can have someone that can cross a ball, pass a ball, free kicks, create, yeah, and offer something you know other than what we have at the moment because we just don't. But have they've it. got to be available, and, and those types of things, the qualities that do cost money that you. That I think. I think the trouble is, right? I think promotion. Well, then why not go out and spend? The, the trouble is, right? I think maybe we. I, I agree with you. Is, is that we're trying to attract that quality of player, but we have to sell the ambition of the club. Now we know that we've gone through a real kind of resurgence, and the quality of football is better. And we've got a really good manager. No one else either knows that or gives a fuck. What they're going to see is, you know, I'm 28 years old. I've got one big move left in me. Oh, they were 11th last year in League One. I think maybe that's kind of sort of the, oh, so they're signing for the Luton Towns or the, or the you know, Tickle Wickham or whoever, rather than the Ipswiches. So maybe there's um, a kind of a, 
we have to acknowledge the players we get are based on where we finish last season. Um, if we were third, you know, we're thinking, oh, we missed out by a, a cheeky goal in the 88th minute on the on the playoff final. You might get that high quality of players because they're thinking, okay, I'm, we're going to go up this year and I'm going to make them. But maybe, maybe the you know, maybe our expectations are higher than where we are. Which is every so football fan's God go given right, by the way. That's every football fan's God given absolutely. right. Absolutely, absolutely. Rotherham go up, and we signed, we signed, we signed the depot from. Yeah, well, because he, he was available, and the circumstances was right. What I would say is two things, really. First of all, I've just literally seen on social media as, as Ben was talking there that Premier uh, Man United are bottom for return on money spent on wages and transfers. Again, right. it's, it's important. So it's more reflective or more important that it's how you spend it, not not that you just spend it. Do you know what I mean? Like you've got to make sure it's correct. And this, and the second thing is, when you get a Wes Burns, every club's the same. Whatever whatever league it is, when you get a player like that, or that, that who's one of your best players, you never want to let them go. So when another club has to try and bring them yeah. into their own team and buy them. Those transfers are always the, the longer taking transfers because there's more people around the table. First of all, the club valuations, then the agents, then the players, then the dreams, then the families. So those things don't happen normally. Think of the, think of the players we signed when, in our promotion. I know we're going back a while, but our promotion winning side, that was based on the back of the last seven seasons. Six of them have been in the playoff, in the playoffs. Mm. And we'd lost the playoff final usually against West Ham. So, you know, the Stewarts, all, all the players like this. That was, we sold the vision based on the level we were perceived to be at, which was top end of the championship, just missing out on their premiership every single season. You, you buy that quality of player to kind of where you are. Whereas I think now, stuck in the middle of League One, bearing in mind we finished worse than the previous season, and the previous season was an absolute cataclysmic hellscape. Um, I think the potential really good players, those two or three million pound signings, maybe it's the fact that the money's there, but the players kind of look at the club and think, yeah, if you're willing to pay three million for me, so are these five teams, and they finished third, fifth, fourth, and, and they're 15th in the championship. So maybe we actually have to drag ourselves to a higher position generally before we attract the players we want. If, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I agree. Absolutely. Um, last couple of comments, then we'll move on to some fixtures. Obviously, tomorrow the fixtures are released, 9am. Join us live or watch on Catch Up. We'll also be live in the evening, looking at a couple of key fixtures, as I'll call them, or what could be the key fixtures of the campaign. Uh, we've got Norman, an interview with uh, the EADT. Ashton said we were buying players that could also make in the championship. For me, only ball fits that. Um Hawks is on tomorrow morning, says tune in. It's going to be absolutely lit. Martin Flory, we are looking at players from overseas. That came from Ashton. It certainly did on this very platform. We said we were looking at every every market that we possibly could. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Right, tomorrow, season fixture release day. Who do we want opening day? In fact, I'll go, I'll go one further. Who do we fancy our first two games? If you could choose them both, what would you go? Mike, I'll start with you. If you, if you could choose our first two. First of all, first question. First day of the year, would you like to be home or away? Home. Yeah? First game of the season, home against Derby. Okay. Ooh, home against... I like that. Mm. Why, I'll why, why particularly because Derby? Derby yeah. been relegated, and relegated teams are easy to play against the promoted side. Particularly ones that are in disarray with ownership. Yeah, disarray. And the other one would be, my second team with Barnsley away. We get them two out of the way, get some results against them, that's going to help our confidence no end. Okay. Um, and, and people say, oh, we don't, we don't want an easy game at the start of the season. Because if we have an easy game, we think we're the bee's knees and bust, bust end of the, of the championship. I could all bubble our, burst our bubble. And then we'll I don't want to, I don't want to play a promotion, promoted winning, a promotion from League Two side. We because got done last year from that. Out last year. Yeah, we got done last year from exactly We got that, done right. time by them teams. And they, they, they. You know, they, Buggy, Morkham and oh god. Yeah, they had they had momentum. Whereas Derby yeah. have not had momentum and they're gonna they'll lose a few of their players and well they uh, they even got Barnsley a... have lost a few as well now. So I just think oh, that'd be my I'd but I'd take Derby at home, Barnsley away, and then then that'll give us some idea of where we are. Okay. Because there'll be two two have relegated teams from the championship. I don't no, think I don't they have got five players. I don't think they have. I don't think got, they have. They've got seven days to field to, to prove they can start the season, or they're out. Is from what I understood. 
Well, there we go. But, okay, like that, Mike Darby Barnsley. We've got, before I come to you, Ben, we've got Cruncher. Bristol Rovers away, he would like. Ian would like uh, Forest Green at home. Um, we've got uh, Darby away from Louis Fenton. One Rover Vlogs, who will be joining this platform to discuss Bristol Rovers as we do our series on Meet the, the New Lads. That's the three teams down, three teams up. We'll be talk, talking to Charlie about Bristol Rovers at some point. I promise you, Charlie, we certainly will. Every time I say, right, Charlie, this show, we sign a player. So maybe I'll just keep rearranging Charlie until the end of August. And we might, you know, eventually you'll have a transfer people can, can, can agree on. Um, ben, your first two. Who would you like? Do you know what? I'm going to say Accrington Stanley at home because if, if Caden Jackson is to have any kind of a seat, he won't. He won't be playing anymore after 10 games because he's useless. But if he was to have any kind of decent season, I think you want to score against the team you come from. That always seems to happen in League One. So I would say Accrington Stanley at home so Jackson can maybe get a brace and that might be the start of a fantastic season. And I'll say the away game, um, I would say someone like Lincoln. Um, Oxford, good teams, tough just to see where we are because I agree, I don't want these promoted teams, I want teams that are solid in the league and um, to see where we are with them. You know, maybe it will, it will, it will give us a reality check of what we need to do, and we still have 44 games left to do it. So, yeah, okay, all right, I like Can't it. I just see Lewis Robinson but Sunderland away, does he not know they got promoted? <laughs> Evidently I, I not. Wish, I wish it was time to end the way. I wish. I wish. I love it. Uh, uh, evident, evident, evidently not. Lewis <laughs> Robinson. <laughs> crew, he wants. Well, no. Hang on. He, he also, crew got relegated. I think he's having a joke there. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> oh, okay. crew also got also got relegated. Thank um, you indeed, yeah. Louis Wednesday first home game for him. Oh, Lewis, if you play yeah, Aki at home, then if we play Aki at home, then Morty will end up suspended for game two. <laughs> That's a great point, actually. That's a great point. That Maybe he needs a suspension point. over and done with quick. Maybe he does. Uh, yeah. Now, earlier, I put all the League One teams into our random wheel generator, and I came up with the first five fixtures. I basically did what they do at the EFL, just spun a wheel and just did the fixtures. Um, so here are the first five. 15 points are on offer. First of all, tell me your thoughts on the first five, if this <clears> was to be the first five, and how many points you think we would get. Before I drop that, though, don't forget, awaydaybeers.com, the beautiful game and the beautiful, uh, sorry, the beautiful beer for the beautiful game, awaydaybeers.com. You can grab your ITC Legends packs and other beers for a summer, which is shaping up weather-wise, hopefully, to be absolutely beautiful. It's just missing a major tournament. We certainly haven't got that, but instead, get yourself in the garden, get the old paddling pool out, get the ankles uncovered, get get some water on them and get a couple of beers down you and live life the way it was meant to be lived. Awaydaybeers.com, partnering with Talking Town. Here is your five. We have got MK Dons away. Okay. Last year, they were really, really decent. Shrewsbury at home, Oxford away, Derby at home, and Rovers away. That's your first five. Mike, if that was your first five, what are you saying? Oh, look, you know, let's be real. 15 points would be lovely. I think probably I'd be wanting 12 from 15. We can't win every game. We're not going to win every game. But if we took 12 from the first five games, I think as Itchery Town fans would be would be pleased. 12, 11 or 12 points, I'd be quite happy with that, with that at the start of the season. That gives us a little bit of a momentum. Uh, maybe not lose any of them games, but say drop a, you know, maybe a... I don't know. Yeah, MK Dons, I think that could be a draw. Shrewsbury is a win. Oxford is a draw. Derby win. Rovers, yeah. Yeah, win. Yeah, a One, win. Two, okay. Yeah, 9, 12. Yeah, 12, 13, maybe 12, 13. I think that's, 12 that's from 15 feasible. would be a terrific return. Obviously, MK oh, Dons, Ben, playoff heartbreak for them. Shrewsbury, mm. you know, we all know Shrewsbury by now. Oxford, again, a team that always seemingly starts badly but ends, ends up normally fairly well. They, they they fell away a little bit towards the back end of last year. Derby in disarray um, and Bristol Rovers just promoted. That's your teams that the random wheel generator threw up. What would you what would you say this time tomorrow if I said to you that, 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 that that's the first five, Ben? What are your thoughts? Um, I'll say, I would say 
I would love 12 points, but I think probably realistically 10, three wins and a draw. Um, and it will only come down to the amount of goals we're capable of scoring. And um, 10 points would be good for the opening five. Considering three wins, three wins and a draw and a one loss, that would be then, wouldn't it, Ben? Yeah, it would be. And the last year, I think it was our opening 10 games, we got 10 points. So it would be twice as good as last season. So... Yeah, that's what I've been looking at. Three wins, a draw, and a loss, I think, will be realistic. Um, all depends on what we do with the strikers. If we score the goals, we'll win, because I think the goals will just... If we find that person... God, if we find that person, you want to We've got to score more than one or two, one goal a game, you know? We've got yeah. to get them two goals, three you goals. Know, how many Put times do we lose points know? from winning you know, positions? By our time, three nil up, and then, and then yeah. just contain the ball, contain the possession, and mm. just make teams run around... Point that's yeah, trying to get the ball off us. Kill off games, put them in bed, score more than one goal. Absolutely. Of times we lost that's how you get promotions. I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. I like it. 55 minutes and we're agreeing. I like it. What 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 I would ask both of you, obviously, with with that random generator that threw up MK Don's first game away, how does that sit with you two? Because I looked at it and I, and I actually thought the more I think about this, the more I I actually quite want a heavy hitter away first day because a, it's an away game where you, where you leave your home game somewhere else later in the campaign where you could be coming into some decent form. But second of all, it gets a, a, a fellow contender out of the way early doors. Their business might not be done. They might have injuries. <laughs> or you just walk out of it. Okay, you, you don't come away with maximum points or even any points, but it's still 45 games in which you can just recover the situation. Let's get the the, you know, the, the, the the more traditional, tougher games out of the way nice and early. That's what I think, Ben. No. He tro- dropped the bollock on last year with the teams at the bottom of the table. Those are the teams we dropped all these points against. And, and we actually, the more the season went on, the better we got with all the top league sides. We we tend to do worse when we assume that the win is there. So the, the mm. fucking Morkins and all these bloody teams and the Cheltenham's, these are the teams we were losing against. These are the teams we couldn't score against. So I would rather probably have the lower teams first just to actually prove that it's a proof of concept. It's a proof of squad, the proof of tactics, a proof of coaching. Get the proof of concept, the prototype of what you want to do for the season first, and then we are out the final product. And I think you have to do that against the promoted sides. Um, you've, you've, got no, you've got no business beating the top teams if you can't kill the momentum of a team coming up from the league below you. So personal preference, that's, that's the way around I would like it. Okay. All right. Fair, fair play. Uh, and Mike, before we close tonight's show, I want to try and keep it around to an hour. Just because we're live again twice tomorrow. Look at this. Look, you go, you go weeks twice. or months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's you go... tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is where we're going to look at some of the more key fixtures in, in League One campaign. Okay. Yeah. Uh, with 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 um, with Matt and hopefully Amy Downs joining us as well. Uh, awesome. Some of our more favourite away games to come up. Um, weeks of nothing. Weeks of like. Uh, can we get a show out like last week, Mike? Can we? Can, you know, is there enough? We're not just doing a show for a show's sake. You were like, yeah, of course we can, and you were right. We 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 could, but then suddenly, bang! Three shows in the space of two days. It's like being properly back amongst it. But before we go, mm. the League Two, Carlos Tevez, the League Two, Ronaldinho, Telfordinho, as he's being called in the chat by Owen Griffiths, Dominic Telford, torturous because you've got a big, big. Love affair okay, so with, with Dominic look, Telford. I look, I, I've watched a lot of videos on him in the last week. I would say probably last week to be fair. I lost a lot of videos, a lot of games, you know. Um, and I like his movement off the ball, I like his movement when he's with the ball. Do we have a fox in the box? No, he is that type, he can be that type of player, fox in the box, you know. Um, he, he, he reminds me of a fit Norwood. Uh, people saying, oh, yeah, but he's done nothing before that season. Well, look, you know, we don't know the style of play that they're playing. I mean, look at Piggott, you know, banged in loads of goals last season, two goals for us. Had his chances, didn't work out. Look, would I pay money, good money for Telford? No, because I do think that would be a risk. But he's off, he's, he's off, he's on a free. So why not sign him, see what he offers? And if he doesn't, we've got him on contract and we just sell him on at the end of the season. I, you know, it really isn't that hard to sort of figure that out. And now I'm not saying he's the answer. I'm not saying he's going to, he's going to bang in the amount of goals he did last season. But, you, you know, 
sometimes he's 25. Sometimes players do take a while before they hit their peak or hit their prime. He's 25, hitting his prime. And I think he'd, I think on a free, it's worth the risk. You know, if we're getting low knees from Arsenal and free Vs from, you know, from other teams, why can't we take a risk on Dominic Telford? Mm-hmm. You know, at the end of the day, is look, Pickett hasn't worked out, move him on, let's bring in Telford. Even if we get him off the bench and, and you know, and, and go from there, who's to say he wouldn't score 20-plus goals a season for us? What I'm would you say to, to Charlie, yet, but... who's just Sorry? said Telford got 25 league goals last year, went, but went the last 17 without scoring? Sorry, went last 17 without scoring, but then you could argue the same about, you could argue the same amount of Bond. And yet but Bond's not, but Bond's not coming back. In. But Bond's not coming back. No, but people, there's still people now on Twitter and on social Yeah, media. I would. I would. You'd sign Bond back? I would Dominic Telford, would you? Why? Because McCauley Bond scored in League One. Dominic Telford scored in League Two. One's, yeah, one's at least matter, proved he can cut matter. it at our level. Dominic Telford in a, was in a, in, a, in, a, in a very, very small club. And he's, and he's managed to bang in them type of goals. So at the end of the, the, end of the day, is, 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 you know, we'd have to pay for Bond. We don't have to pay for a Telford. So I think it's worth the risk. Look, at the end of the day, it's just an opinion. Well, no, no, but, yeah, I was... you know, regardless, regardless, you know, the end of the day is I think he's a type of player that could get us goals in this league and get help us with promotion. I think he's 25. Oh. I think he's a, a Norwood type player. He knows these leagues. We... He's had a bit more experience. He's dropped down to League Two. And then, you know, with respect, Peter Barrow will look at Tyree Simpson, right? After he's what, a goal fest at Swindon. Yeah. yeah. We we have got to get ourselves a talking town range of Bates with your face on it because it just you dangle it out there and you nibble on it every time. No, but, yeah, but, but in, in all fairness, if all, look, it's just an opinion. It's just my opinion. It's just based on my proven to know, work every time. My, my armchair, as Callie would call it, bless him. Uh, my armchair experience, you know, sat behind the screen watching it and not what you know. I don't know. Norman you know, says it. My rather... Brandon under twelve coaching experience and you know, Norman. Norman I've says heard it all. I tell it, you, Norman would rather have a Premiership under under twenty one striker on loan. Ah oh, shit. <sighs> um, ben, do you mind me asking on on air how how old are you? Hey, how old are you on air? Do you mind me asking how how old you are? No, how old do you think I am? Oh, twenty two. Well, thank you, mate. I've um, no the the hairline and the, yeah, I know. Blech, trying to get me into bed again, Jesus Christ! I am. I was no, thirty eight. Fr- was... <laughs> thirty eight on Friday. So, nineteen ninety six. Do you remember where where you were and what you were doing on this date? I was twelve. No, I can't remember. Quarter final day against Spain. Stuart Pearson, that penalty. Have you I got any memory? Were you really? Is this, is this, is this an English fishing... question? It, I was oh, fishing on the yeah. bank, and we all had this. We had this uh, portable telly, and we were all sat there. We all had there's about as we'd all pulled our rods in, and we all had a bit of drink, and we sat there watching that, and we won on penalties, didn't we? Stuart Pearce penalty, yeah. That that emotion. Yeah, and, uh, to... We went mad. We had running. I was running around with a England flag on my head. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. I, I support. Brilliant. I support Germany, Gov. England have they were shit then, and they're shit. That's now. why I came. That's why I came to you for we've a penalty win. Cup since then. Funny. Anyway, uh, we're done with Dusty. We're back tomorrow at nine a.m. Don't forget <laughs> Ipswich buses go contactless around Ipswich. I was thinking to myself, how do I try and promote? this wonderful company to you and i thought to show you the prices because in the cost of living crisis that we're in a two pound 20 return you can't get better than that 220 return one th- oh absolutely isn't it just I'm all day kidding, adult right? if you think how much fuel costs you just to drive from the outer end switch into center a bit yeah yeah two pound 20 return yeah oh, or that, that, yeah. 470 all day ticket look it's a bargain if it's buses, go to contact us across all routes. You don't even need to change. Just need your plastic. Um, uh, and if it's buses, partnered with Talking Town. The town. Subscribe Absolutely. To TT. Come right, on. we're done. We'll see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. with love, with care. He's the milk train man. That's the fisherman. Stay well. The range of baits coming to you soon. You make me smile when I think of you. If I